Yeah, when Jesus knew he and his disciples need a rest rightly, Jesus tries to retreat to an isolated place, perhaps needing safe space to grieve the murder of his cousin John the Baptist. However, this isolation is very short-lived. Jesus is drawn back into the crowd of their needs. In Matthew 14, we read, Jesus, Matthew says, Jesus had compassion for the people. Jesus sacrifices his self-care to attend to the crowd's needs. This story is about to say, this story I'm about to say is told by a Lutheran pastor found in Faith Lutheran Church website. One day, the 911 dispatcher received a call from a lady. The dispatcher answered the call saying, 911, what is your emergency? The lady on the line in earnest said, in earnest voice said, I would like to order a pizza for delivery. The 911 dispatcher said, ma'am, do you know that you are called 911 emergency number? The serious voice said, I know, I can get, can I get a large pizza with half cheese and half onions and pepperoni on the other side, on the other half? The dispatcher answered, ma'am, are you aware we have called 911 emergency line? The voice on the other side said in serious voice, yes, I know. At that point, the 911 dispatcher realized that this was not a prank call or the person or the person was looking for pizza delivery. Instead, the person was having serious trouble and could not say it over the phone. The dispatcher uh, picked up on that and said, ma'am, are you in an emergency? And the voice on the other side said, yes. When the dispatcher said, you cannot tell me the emergency because there's someone else in the room. Is that correct? The, aunts, the lady on the phone said, yes. When can I get you here? The story goes on to say the dispatcher sent a police officer to the home and found the lady with a drunk, boy, uh, violent boyfriend threatening her, threatening her life. So the lady called 911 and asked him for pizza delivery and the 911 dispatcher quick to intuition to pick up the agency may have saved the lady's life. Many times in our own life, quick decisions have saved the situation from going from bad to worse. Quick decisions have a great impact and can in affect the future and lasting results, as we saw in our gospel reading today. The gospel passage today can be used to create many sermons. Jesus praying, Jesus walking in the water, Jesus wind and the boat, Peter walking in the water, and Jesus saving Peter from drowning, etc. It can go on. However, today I'm going to talk about one word from Matthew chapter 14, the gospel passage for today. The one word that appears three times in Matthew chapter 14. The word is used in Mark's gospel 40 times. Mark seems to like this word. However, Matthew only uses 11 times in the entire gospel and three of it is found in chapter 14. What can this word be? The word is immediately. In verse 22, it says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go. Whenever you see the word immediately mentioned in the gospel, it is, it is like, it, it is a life in, in, in the gospel, in the life of Jesus. We find it lasting impact on people around him. Let us look the three times this word immediately appears in the gospel passage. In verse 22, it says, immediately he got his disciples, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while they dismissed the crowd. 
there are some urgency in action in the, in this uh, story this i listened to a lutheran pastor preach on this and he stated that it could have been a great temptation of jesus early that day jesus had healed many sick people fed 5000 plus men and women and children there was about uh, there would have been about 10000 people in, in that crowd for example imagine a young son brought his aged sick mother to jesus that day she was very sick that no doctor could heal her but jesus healed her and also the son was fed by jesus with the five loaves and two fish and he was filled and uh, he and the crowd were so enthusiastic to make jesus king to throw the roman empire out of palestine in the gospel of john we read that the people wanted to make Jesus king at that time, in this instant. His disciples would have liked this idea of an earthly kingdom. Peter's idea of Messiah was the worldly king. James and John were competing with the other disciples to sit at the right and left hand of Jesus when he comes in his earthly kingdom. The disciples would have been supported, would have supported this proposal by the people to make Jesus king. So Jesus said that quickly, he sent the disciples away in a boat and then they dispersed the crowd and then he went on to pray. Prayer was very important for Jesus. It is a source of strength that he derived from, from his father. Jesus was focused on his mission on earth. Many times we are distracted in our calling to what God, God calls us. Let us look at the bigger picture like Jesus did. The second immediate comes in verse 27. He says, immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. The disciples were fishermen. They very well knew how to uh, navigate the waters of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. If all went well, they would have been on land. However, the Bible says that they spent many hours on the water. And as one passage in John says, or a different translation, it says the third watch of the night. So they, it was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. that they met Jesus. So they would have been in the water for about 9 to 12 hours. That's a long time for experienced fishermen. They had tried, and, uh, they, uh, but they could get to land. They were tired, and they, would see Jesus, they saw Jesus walking towards them. They, they had seen so many miracles done by Jesus. The Bible says they thought it was the ghost, and they were afraid. Many things can distract us from Jesus, and one of them is fear. Jesus did not ridicule them. Jesus knew that they were afraid. Jesus just said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Many times, many things, I'm sorry, many things can distract us from Jesus. But we should always look at the big picture as Jesus did and show kindness where it is due. Jesus did not ridicule them. Jesus knew that they were afraid. Jesus just said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Remember, Jesus knows our fears and our anxiety. God continues to uh, tell us today and always, take heart, do not be afraid. Jesus said to his disciples these three words, it is I. In Greek, the two words, it's two words. It says, ago, amin, which means ago is I and amin is I am. These words in English, it is I and Greek, I am, bring some things to our memory. Does it look familiar? When, when God told Moses, I am, 
It was God's word that he gave to Moses. Remember, God is present with us in our fears and hopes. God is a God who parted the Red Sea when the people of Israel were afraid. God is a God who raised the dead son of a widow and his friend Lazarus. God is a God of the Bible, a forgiving God, gracious, compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in grace. We always think we can only have peace when, they are, when all the storm is gone. What we learn from today's gospel passage is that we can always be at peace in the, in, the, in the storms of life. We can only have peace in the storm because of the presence of Jesus, the great I am. The last word immediately is found in verse 31. Immediately, he reached out and caught, uh, and caught him, saying to him, why do you, why do you, why do you, you of little faith, why do you doubt? When Peter's attention moved from Jesus to the wind, his heart sinks with fear and his feet quickly follow. Many times, we too tend to focus the prob on the problem of life rather than the promise of God. Jesus is personally, Jesus personally reached out to Peter. He did not say, float Peter or say, rise up Peter or call jo John to uh, get his oar to take Peter out. Instead, Jesus reached and to hold Peter. So will Jesus hold each of us in our time of trouble when you are about to drown. When Jesus got into the boat, the wind stopped. Note, Jesus did not do anything to it. He didn't say, stop the wind, or he didn't say, peace be still. But the wind stopped. Peter took a bold step to venture out into the water. But he looked, but when he took his gaze off Jesus, he began to drown. The rest of the disciples stayed in the boat. So wherever we are in our lives, in the water or in the boat, Jesus will keep us safe. Amen.